Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Better Together. My name is Julian Lute, and on behalf of Great Place to Work, thank you for joining us for this important and timely conversation with Maven Clinic. This is such a timely conversation. As a parent with two children under the age of five, both at home and one in pandemic Zoom kindergarten, Maven is a godsend. In fact, the unofficial model for Maven in our home is no parent left behind. You can have that, Kate, it's okay, we've got more. So let's cover a few housekeeping notes before we get started. We look forward to your questions, so please submit them in the questions panel. Our colleagues will field them and we'll do our best to answer them. We'll be sending out this recording along with the deck uh, within about 48 hours. So it's a privilege to introduce Kate Ryder. It's great to see you again, Kate. Kate is the founder and CEO of Maven, a digital health startup that is also the world's largest virtual clinic for women and family health. Prior to founding Maven in 2014, Kate worked in venture capital and as a journalist, writing for The Economist and The New Yorker. Named to Fortune's 40 Under 40 and the Fast Company's Most Creative People, Kate received her BA from the University of Michigan and her MSc from London School of Economics. Now, Maven is a great place to work certified company and number 21 on our 2020 best workplaces in New York list. 98% of employees say it's a great workplace. 99% are committed to exceptional service, and it's because 99% are willing to give extra. And for retention, 94% say they want to stay with Maven for a long time. Maven is truly on the front lines of supporting women and families, and we're excited to hear their story. Kate will be joined in conversation today by our CEO, Michael Bush. Thank you both for joining us. And Michael, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Julian. Thanks very much. And best to you and your growing family. Thank um, you. And we're really excited. Uh, and thanks to everybody who's joining us today and taking a look at this. We got a treat for you today. I absolutely guarantee it. So Maven, the remarkable company that you're about to hear about, I think this background's important. Uh, we got to know Maeve, Maeve and I heard Kate speak and I said, well, she's saying some really interesting things. And so I immediately called our chief of people and I said, hey, check out this, this company called Maven and see what they've got. And it sounds like this might be good for our people. And so that's what we did. We went and, and contracted for the services that you're about to hear about. And for our people in 2020, when they talk about what has made great place to work, a great place to work for all, there's two things. One is the bonus that we gave them at the start of COVID-19 uh, to help their families with unexpected um, expenses. Number two was Maven. It was Maven. So our people are just over the moon in all of our people, whether they're mothers and mothers, fathers and fathers, mothers and fathers, single parents, anybody with some parental responsibilities near them, they have talked about the support that has been provided. So number one, thank you, Kate, for, for what you've built. And uh, number two, for all of you who are listening, if you're thinking about what can you do, this is a strong recommendation from us and we're about to tell you why. So Kate, when where did this idea come from? This idea of, of Maven, tell us about your mission and why you started the company. Sure, well, thank you so much. And, and it's so great to hear um, the impact that we've made with, with your, your employees. Um, that's the best part of this job is, is hearing that all of our hard work actually is for something. Um, so uh, I founded Maven back in 2014, so six, about six and a half years ago. Um, and really our mission is to redefine life's most critical healthcare moment, which is the beginning of a family, um, through a more comprehensive care model and broadened access. And so, you know, what that really means is, um, you know, personally at that time, so I, I, I was turning, you know, I had just turned 30. It was the decade at which a lot of my friends were, were starting to think about families. I knew that, you know, I didn't have kids at that point. But I knew that, you know, it was the decade I was going to have kids. And so my first friend went through the whole pregnancy experience and things started to happen that they really don't tell you about as a, as a woman, you know, postpartum depression or infertility issues that then, you know, uh, kind of watching her journey, um, she just didn't get, she didn't get a lot of the care. It was really eye-opening um, to, to see all of the, the gaps that she was experiencing particularly because at the time I was working in venture capital covering digital health. And what everyone was talking about was, you know, patient engagement and, and how do you, how do you really bring a great consumer experience to, to 
people as they're going through the healthcare system. And that was just not at all what I was seeing, particularly when it came to, to family building. And then, you know, I think as my, as I have since had kids, as many of my friends have had kids, you know, that the system is really designed to not only not support women, but all types of families. So whether you have, you know, you're a same sex couple and you want to adopt, there's a virtually, you know, no, no um, services through the core health plan that really supports that. And that's what a lot of employers were using at the time. Um, same with, you know, if you're going through fertility back in 2014, 2015, there's not a lot of reimbursement. If you are a single mother or you, you know, again, wanted to go through surrogacy or, or you had to go through IVF for medical reasons. And so there's all these different pathways to parenthood and then it culminates in a, a baby at the end of it, um, hopefully for, for those, those families that are trying all these different means. And, um, and there was just, it was just crazy to me that if this was the gateway of, of healthcare and, and we all become kind of healthcare consumers and chief medical officers of our homes during this time that there weren't a lot of support services for all these different ways. So, so that's where Maven was born. Um, and so when we say things like comprehensive care model, it means that all these pathways are covered. It means that, you know, if you are, if you get, if you start a family through just pregnancy or you start a family through adoption, that you have services to support through all of those different um, experiences. And that, and then, you know, from, from an access standpoint, one of the most exciting trends right now in healthcare and then I think now everyone kind of knows what telemedicine means with COVID. Um, you know, we we thought we could build a network of all of these different types of providers, whether they're adoption coaches or OBGYNs or mental health providers, to really support all these unique pathways and give people a more supportive experience um, during this this critical moment. Okay, and this kind of innovation comes from you know actually seeing that problem, you know, and deciding you're going to do something about it. And we're certainly grateful that you did. And uh, I think if I have my facts right, you actually closed a round of financing in February, which your timing was pretty good. Uh, pretty you know, I think that that's like divine intervention about about uh, Maven and and what Maven's, Maven's supposed to do. Um, how has that been for you? Yes, it was very very lucky and well timed. I remember. Um, you know, writing kind of the fundraising announcement during President's Day weekend um, in mid-February. And really there were, you know, there was stuff about COVID in the news, but it was not really, no one was really talking about it. And so, um, and then three weeks later, it was like the whole world has changed. And so one of the things that was really, uh, really fortunate is, you know, as, as CEO, one of the first things you had to do is kind of, you know, you are all in this new weird remote work environment, which we had never experienced before. And you had to, you know, you, you, you had to show leadership and, and kind of say, it's, it's going to be okay. And one of the big things was guys, don't worry. We just raised a lot of money. We have a full bank account. It's going to be okay. I promise. Uh, so thank, thank God uh, that, that we had the timing that we did. Um, but ultimately what it's really allowed us to do is, you know, with COVID has has come a changed world, and we we always have prided ourselves being three steps ahead of of innovation and some of the major trends going on. And so there, the, you know, and so what it's allowed us to do is is actually continue to innovate and continue to invest in our our product and engineering teams. We've hired sixty people since COVID started um, to to make sure that we're we're meeting all the needs of our patients during this time. And whether it's you know the spike in mental health that we're seeing, or whether it's you know we we just launched our our parenting and pediatrics product um, that goes up through age 10 now to support both parents and children when it comes to, you know, behavioral health and special needs and, and telemedicine support. So, so it really has also just allowed us to continue to push forward, um, you know, on on our on our our product roadmap. Okay, and so if we go to March, which I, we were together in early March. Um, we, you know, I went to, yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know, I think the last conference of the state of California, and um, and so. You know, you know the world uh, unfolded for both of us. You know, as, as CEOs um, with with employees. But if you can uh, take us back to you know kind of March as it began to unfold with your employees, uh, how did you and your leadership team react to support your employees? So, um, so it, it was it's all very vivid because it was such kind of this existential cosmic moment. But um, essentially, we were because there was a lack of of testing in those early days. Um, we, and we were, were a New York-based company, so really where, where it really hit in the beginning, um, you know, it was like one day where we were all in the office together, then someone got a fever. We had no way of knowing whether that person had COVID or not. And so we had to like very abruptly just shut the office um, and, and everyone was in this work from home environment. 
And then, you know, I think that what was happening was this, the news headlines that were coming out, and particularly for many of our, our people who are based in New York, it was just, it, it was terrifying, quite frankly. And so one of the first things we did was um, we gave everybody in the first few weeks, like a day off. And we said, okay, this is like a design your new office day at home. And we gave them a stipend and we said, okay, you know, whether you're a parent with children at home from school or whether you're, you're now alone in your apartment, like you, just like use, use this stipend and use this time to, to set up like a, a workspace or, or set up a ch child's virtual learning schedule and get your life in order. So I think, you know, one of the things and, and, and that kind of, you know, we've done multiple things like that throughout this experience, you know, last, last or two months ago in October, you know, we just gave everybody a day off to kind of combat burnout. Um, and just to kind of, you know, really listen to our members and 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 listen to what they need and be flexible. Um, and you know, we've launched two mental health benefits of our own. Um, and you know, we we have, on Maven have you know tons of mental health. So you know, we 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 have unlimited credit for our, all of our our employees. Um, and so you know, it's it's really just trying to to listen and then and then give them what they want. And I think what everybody has resoundingly, I mean, the main themes have been flexibility um, and, and really, uh, you know, and, and job security and having, you know, connection with, with all of the Maven employees, with their manager. And so throughout the summer when, um, you know, we organized some socially distanced in-person, you know, outdoor meetups in small groups with teams where everyone was wearing masks, but just continued to try to foster that sense of community while responding to all the different needs that our, our employees have. Well, you know, we scanned through your, your employee uh, survey results and looked at some of the open comments. And one of the ones that jumped out to me is an employee saying, our vision is powerful. Our CEO is laser focused on achieving our mission. And the people here are kind to one another. I mean, what, what's better than that? Um, you know, that people are feeling cared for, you know, as a person while pursuing um, this, this change the world uh, mission. And, you know, also on the personal side, uh, you're a working parent. Um, and so how has that been? I mean, you're, you're driving this startup in this, the craziest year to be doing that, uh, 2020, and having two kids at home. Uh, what has been your biggest challenge? Uh, and what have you learned that's helping you uh, as you, you know, clarify the vision for Maven going forward? Yeah, so I think, um, you know, it's it's funny when you start a company, you're obviously mission driven, but every year it's like I'm more mission driven <laughs> because of all of the different things I'm personally experiencing in the healthcare system or as a parent. Um, you know, what we did was because our kids are four and two, um, we moved out to live with my parents for childcare um, because I knew that that was going to be just a huge gap and I couldn't, you know, my husband uh, works full time. I obviously work full time. And so um, and so it was really amazing to just be with my family and have them step up for us so that there, that I was able to focus on Maven and, and our vision and, and, you know, during the hours that I was, was working. And then when I wasn't working, you know, our, our kids are thankfully so young and oblivious that they just want to play. So, so then, you know, that I was, I was with them. Um, and I, you know, I think my, my husband went a little insane living with his in-laws for that long. Um, so we think we, we moved back to New York after, uh, six months. We were there for six months for childcare. Um, and, uh, and now our, our kids are, are in, um, in-person school actually in New York, you know, as, as you know, New, or as, as some of you may know, New York city has kept schools open. Um, and so, uh, and so that's been a, a godsend um, as well. But I, I think, you know, really it's just uh, uh, take one day at a time. Um, my husband's an introvert, so he actually is, is is happy as a clam. I'm a massive extrovert. So I'm, you know, like having conversations with my two-year-old daughter to get my, my, uh, my, my extroversion out. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's just, it's been, um, you know, uh, we've been blessed. We haven't had health issues in our family and we've had a supportive family around us. But um, we have experienced moments where we had to quarantine because of exposure with with no childcare, including my parents. And you know, it's really tough. And I think just um, I I feel for for everyone out there who has been living without without support for so long. One of my best friends who lives in Madison, Wisconsin, her kids haven't been in school since March. Um, and you know, they're it's it's just really rough. Um, and 
And so I, I think it's just everyone's everyone's struggling. We've been fortunate um, given we have family around, but um, you know, I think it's it's been personally challenging. And then I'm pregnant, I'm expecting my third child now. So, you know, I think we're just being extra careful, uh, just given some of the uncertainty around COVID and pregnancy. Well, congratulations on uh, number three on, on its way. And thanks for sharing that late breaking news with us uh, uh, today. <laughs> and um, and we're gonna come back to that issue, you know, that what you're describing, you know, kind of uh, the burnout related to those who have less support structures around. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, so we're gonna double click on that. But before I go there, I just wanna go back to, uh, again, before COVID-19, where Maven had one of the largest telemedicine networks in women's and family health. So that, that was already there. And then COVID-19 hits and you saw 300% increase in demand, you know, in the areas of mental health and telemedicine appointments up 50% across your platform. Can you tell us how you handled that, how you responded to that and what it did for your customers? Yep. So we um, are, we have an exceptional provider community. Um, I can't even tell you, you know, a lot of the providers that work in women's and family health, whether they're OBs or midwives, nurse practitioners, pediatricians, these are the types of doctors and, and, and providers that are, are not necessarily joining the field of medicine for money, right? They're not some of the highest paid uh, professions. They're doing it genuinely because they want to um, help patients. And so, and, and they see the, the, the many gaps in care that um, you know, women and families experience. And so what we saw was our providers stepped up and you know, we did an emergency rollout to, um, for instance, Mass Health with the state of Massachusetts's Medicaid plan. So we all of a sudden in a two week period had to make sure we had enough availability of Massachusetts licensed physicians to serve that client. And it was just incredible our provider community started reaching out to other providers, you know, that they knew in Massachusetts and everyone wanted to help. So that was what allowed us to keep our, um, you know, to keep our on-demand nature extremely high where, you know, often you can book an appointment on Maven within an hour with, with a lot of these different specialties. Um, it's just, we have an, we work with just an exceptional group of providers. We have over 25 different specialties in a lot of the, in a lot of these different categories like uh, genetic counseling, reproductive endocrinology, adoption coaching, mental health, nutrition, physical therapy, pediatrics. Um, and so, and, and all, all, you know, all of them were stepping up. So that was one area. I think another thing um, that we saw was there was, you know, particularly pregnancy and then children's health, pediatrics, it, it's actually routine medical care. And so because of the massive disruptions that happened in March and April, and then a lot of the fertility clinics had shut down to preserve PPE, that actually a lot of our patients were actually starting to get their primary care from Maven because they weren't able to go into their physician's offices. Um, you know, they were scared. A lot of the, the prenatal um, clinics had, had shut down temporarily, again, because there was PPE shortages. Um, and so, you know, I, I think we stepped up and were able to really fill, fulfill an important role in, in, you know, for those women in first and second and third trimester or for women who are delaying fertility cycles and wanting to understand the medical complications or for parents who needed pediatricians. I used our, our pediatric services at, like, you know, multiple times throughout COVID to just, because that, that was the only thing I had. Um, and it was, you know, it was, it was really important. And I think the, the longer term effects of that are that the entire healthcare system has now realized that virtual care can, can really do a lot, particularly in these, in these routine, um, you know, categories like, like uh, OB and pediatrics, where you can really deliver a more efficient model that's more dem democratic, there's more access, it's more affordable. And so I think that there's a lot of really interesting, um, we wrote a paper on, on utilization in telemedicine during, during the, the pandemic and maternal health and children's health. And you're, you're, you're starting to see a lot of people certainly like wake up and say, okay, maybe this, this can be more of the mainstream way that people receive health care. Um, you know, so that's a silver lining I, I, that I, I think. And, you know, through part of our experience with, with our employees, and we realized what a huge opportunity this was uh, to do more uh, for all people, as well as the, the COVID experience. Um, we became aware of how a situation that wasn't great prior to COVID just, you know, uh, suffered uh, under new pressure, you know, that, that you're recently describing. And so jointly, we decided a uh, great place to work and Maven to, to kind of research this so we could really think about what we could do going forward to help more working people um, to learn more. And so together, we did the largest study on work, working parents ever 
full of actionable opportunities. For all of you listening and tuning in, I would take, ask you to take a look at it. You can go to Maven's website, as well as the Great Place to Work website, and read it. And so, uh, Kate, who do you think should read it? Who do you think, you know, as you think about, um, you know, companies going forward, trying to create a great place to work for all, uh, who in their organization do you hope reads it? Well, so I, I hope everyone who's on people teams and talent teams are reading it, whether your angle is benefits or diversity and inclusion or comp or talent, um, as well as, as, as just the leadership teams. Because I think that one of the big things that is at risk right now with COVID is that we're going to lose diverse workplaces. Um, you know, I think we've seen that um, millions of women have dropped out of the workforce over the past four months. So now the, the, the levels are at the, where they were in 1988. Um, so I think, you know, part of that is, is caregiving and, and motherhood and, and the virtual um, education that a lot of parents are finding themselves in. Um, you know, I think that another thing that we found is that, you know, people of color are disproportionately parents in the workforce. And so if you're not actually supporting parents and all of the burnout that they're experiencing right now, you could also see a flight risk there or just reduce schedules. And, and it's, we all know that it's so hard once you go part time or once you leave to actually ramp back up again. Um, because, you know, America is the ultimate capitalist place in the world. It's really competitive. And so, um, so I think it's just so critical right now for every every company to, and, and particularly their leadership, to really understand these issues so that we actually don't lose the decades of progress that we've made, but we still really have more to go. Um, and so, um, so, so yeah, I mean, I, I think what I'm, I'm hearing as well is ESG is one of the most important thing that boards are, are now looking at. Um, so, you know, board members of companies should be reading reports like this as well to really hold their management and leadership teams accountable. Well, you know, one of the things that we found out, you know, that you're highlighting is, it, it, you know, just, just thinking about uh, women and men with parental responsibilities, which due to those responsibilities during these times, it's not that they want to leave work, they have to you know, in order to, to take care of, of these children. And, and, and then within that, women are four times more likely to leave the workforce. Four times more women than men have left the labor force. Um, this is just talking about the last four months. Um, and as you mentioned, a large percent of those being black and brown uh, mothers. So there are 2.4 million working mothers who have somehow been able to scrap things together to not have to leave the workforce, but they're burnt out. They're burnt out, so they're barely making it. So this is like not something to be cheering about or, or to feel success. Now, there are some workplaces that uh, we identify as being best workplaces for working parents, which is the point of our session today to help organizations highlight the need to take care of uh, you know, these working parents who are currently experiencing workplaces um, uh, or burnout in, in the workplace. So as, as you, uh, what advice do you have for people that are listening right now um you know that that kind of the pitch for hey you want to make sure you're doing all you can in the following areas to take care of the people who are working for you who have parental responsibilities yeah no the, the great question i i think you know ultimately one of the big trends that we we started to see a few years ago that we are are still kind of seeing it was was the the paid leave the paid parental leave and that was that was great and, and a great step forward but i think what we're seeing now is that you know, it shouldn't just it shouldn't just stop there. That you know, yes, giving people time off after they have kids um, is 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 critical to actually creating more gender equality in the in the workforce and bringing mothers back to work. But there's actually a lot more support that is needed here because there are a lot of gaps in our healthcare system, particularly when it comes to starting a family. So you know, one area would be fertility coverage. Um, I think one of the things we found is that more than eight in 10 of the best workplaces are providing reimbursement for fertility treatments. Um, and particularly over the last three years, more than half have increased coverage. So that's one huge area. Um, you know, I think in general, return to work is, is important. It's one of the, the, the biggest things we did when we launched to employers in 2015 was we had we the first uh, product with a return to work product where 43% of, uh, of mothers are dropping out of the workforce after having kids. You know, you really need you really need that support system to help bring them back. Um, and then childcare has been another big one. I think we've seen a lot of increased support of of, of childcare reimbursement. 
Um, and so really kind of leaning in there. And so, you know, I think at, at Maven, our approach to all of this has been, you know, there's a lot of different solutions that have now come up supporting this, which is great, but that, you know, it still is one connected journey that when you start with IVF, you know, you could start with IVF and then get pregnant and then miscarry and then go back through IVF and then get pregnant and then get postpartum depression. And then you have to go back to work. And then maybe, you know, you're starting to deal with pediatric needs that really it's, it's to have such fragmentation in that experience is going to actually have a, you know, you're going to have a not a great experience. And so if the healthcare system already does that to you. How do you create a platform where all of that is, is in one place? And so that's what, what Maven's done over the past six years is really kind of say, okay, paid leave is a great place to start. But now what's that support system that you layer on top of that, that actually really attack some of these core um, issues and, and, and alarming statistics that we're seeing to keep mothers, to keep parents back in the, you know, in the workforce productive at a time when often their careers are ramping. Because you know, a third of, of, of people who you know, at, at work are parents. Um, and it's often, it's re really when your career is ramping. I mean, you're in your, your 30s, your 40s. And, um, and so, but, but being a parent is like your most important job. And so how do you really support that so that people can be their best selves at work? Yeah, and you know, we have a problem in the US, unlike most industrialized nations, uh, we have no mandate uh, for paid parental leave at the federal level. Um, are things happening there that, that, that give you hope? Are you aware of anything uh, that, that's going on in terms of policy? Um, where that might be uh, affected? Are you doing anything around the lobbying support uh, for that effort? Or are you aware of people who are doing that? I'm just wondering, uh, because that would be great uh, if it happened. I'm just curious as to whether um, you expect any progress you know, to happen in that area. Yeah, and there's some great advocacy orgs that are really working on this, like Paid Leave USA. Um, you know, I, I'm hopeful that with this new administration coming in, as we really look at how do we support our working families it, you know in, in an economy that is 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 not as great as it was in previous years where there's a high unemployment rate um that you know how do how do we really support um you know working families and so i think that's we're seeing that messaging come out a, a lot in this administra in this uh, you know new administration and and so you know hopeful that finally um you know this bill will be will be passed we're we're starting to see a lot of states do it um but it would be great to have it done at a federal level. Okay, and, and in terms of um, how should leaders who, who are listening to us today, who uh, basically have been leading their businesses, but this is a new topic for them. For, for whatever reason, this is kind of a new topic for them. They never really double clicked on this as, as something that they should be focusing on in terms of creating a, a, a great place to work for all. Um, what do you think they should, what can you share with them today to help enlighten them a little bit more in terms of the, the entire journey of planning and raising a family? So we're kind of talking about that executive who has not planned and raised a family or has been like brain dead during the process while their partner has been doing those things. Um, you know, what can you do to help them think about it, you know, kind of from the initial idea uh, through the journey to have a little bit more empathy uh, for their employees? Yeah, you know, it's it's a great question. I think it's one that we both see at a corporate level. And then I, I we personally experienced as we've raised investment over the years for Maven. Um, like, do people understand the problem that we're solving? Um, so I think there's there's two ways um, to really think about the business case for, for why, um, you know, investing in, in working families is important. So um, first, uh, there's the, the talent attraction and, and retention, um, you know, uh, mandate. And so I think what's great is that I, I often kind of think of the, the really progressive employers, many of which are in our report, you know, on your list that are part of, you know, great place to work. Those are kind of like the white knights for me because they're, they're innovative, they get it, they have execs and management teams and boards that are really doubling down on this. You know, one of our our, our one of our great clients, Bank of America, is in the first, you know, in, 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 in on on your in your report, like as one of the top companies, and you know, there's a real commitment there at the top to really invest in this um, in this population and 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 in helping working families. So I think those employers kind of show a lot of other employers that might not get it um, that this is is really important because they're going to get 
you know, the best talent it, it, to, to work at their companies because of the benefits and because of, of, of the philosophy that they have. And then, you know, other, other companies follow. So we, we certainly see like, you know, with reports like this, like there are companies that aren't on this list that aspire to be on this list. And so they're really taking, they're really trying to understand what are these best companies doing. Um, so that's, that's one area. And, and a lot of it is like, you, you will have the, you, you know, what we found is that if you really support working families and working parents, you have 5.5 times more revenue than, you know, than you don't. And so there's a, a real business case for that. I think the other, um, the other area is that, you know, with, uh, with this whole idea of like bringing a child into the world, it's actually typically one of the top healthcare costs that you have as an employer. And so, um, and so ultimately, you know, what we found with some clients that might not, you know, be as, as in touch with some of the, the problems that people are going through in their thirties and forties, um, that, and you know, twenties, thirties and forties as they're, you know, expecting in young parents, um, that, that ultimately the cost equation speaks for itself. And if you can actually bring a better benefit and it simultaneously reduce your healthcare costs, since a lot of um, employers are, you know, that, that's, that's, they, they, they pay the lion's share of it, um, then, then there's a real business case for actually doing all of these other things around supporting mental health, supporting adoption, supporting things that might not have that direct ROI on the, on the healthcare side of things, but that are baked into our price. And so, you know, there is a return actually coming out of it and, and having these more holistic models. And so I think those, you know, those are ways that we've seen um, the, the business cases, you know, built, particularly for for um, for clients that might not have had a leadership that that totally understands the problems. But but the, the good thing is um, that we're also seeing is that it's just so rampant and widespread. A lot of these stories that are, are where people are really struggling during this time of life, that increasingly everyone knows someone, whether it's their sister or their direct report that they love, that they were so you know excited about her potential, and then she she leaves the workforce. Like everyone has been, we're, we're increasingly finding, and particularly in the past few years, everyone has a story, and that's that's great because you know, it's that personal and emotional connection to the problem that often drives that action. Yeah, well, one of the things that we found out jointly in, in our research is that I think of, of the people that we surveyed about, you know, 450,000 people, 53% um, of them have parental responsibilities. Uh, and then as you double clicked on the data and took a look at uh, across some demographic comparisons, you found that, that when you look at black and brown employees, uh, the percentage is higher. I, I think closer to 68%. And so as we think about uh, 2020 and, and what we've gone through, you know, where it, it, this has always been important, but it's become more important, you know, that, that, that creating a great place to work, a high trust culture, really taking care of your employees and, and defining what care is, doing some action to let them know they're cared for. This is just um, uh, the land of opportunity uh, compared for, uh, it's kind of surprising how few companies are doing it. Uh, you know, in fact, and so I think that that uh, our role is to make sure that we let companies uh, know about this, and and also, you know, with with George Floyd's unfortunate murder, um, that heightened uh, a lot of companies' uh, interest and focus on diversity and inclusion, um, which which we've been heavily involved in uh, since that that horrible tragedy and the other tragedies of a similar nature like that, and. So a lot of companies have done things to, to begin to talk about race, to begin to talk about injustice, to begin to, to uh, uh, talk about what it means to be anti-racist. They've, they've leaned into their employee resource groups. That some have started employee resource groups. So there's a lot, of, some have looked at their recruiting practices. They set goals in terms of hiring. A lot of those things have happened, but no action yet. Uh, but, but a lot of important work uh, that, that is needed before the action. This is an area where employers can do something right now. They can do something right now. Th this focus of caring for people with parental responsibilities, which either directly affects people or indirectly, everybody has a team member at least, um, who, who has these responsibilities. This is, I think, the number one thing that I can think of, of something to do. If you wanna do something about diversity and inclusion and belonging, to show your employees that you care, for all people that you can make their lives better right now, this is the one thing. This is more important than a listening session 
on race. This is more important than um, you know setting targets you know around recruiting nine months from now. You can actually do this now and help every ERG, including members of, of the population who are not a part of an ERG. So um, through the research and looking at the data, that became clear for us that that this is kind of uh, the the call to action. Um, and, and the data drives us there. I just wanted to, you know, I know you agree with all of that. If there's anything in addition that you would offer to CEOs and leaders and, and those who need to advocate, you know, to heighten, uh, you know, this opportunity to see it the same way that we do as CEOs with working people working for us. Yeah, I would just, uh, the only thing I to add is to make sure that the benefits and products you're bringing in to address it actually, particularly along the lines of, you know, racial diversity, that they actually are, are doing something about it. So, you know, for us, for example, one of the, the things that we find is that, you know, oftentimes when it comes to parenting and family life or, or bringing a baby in the world, you really just want to talk to someone that you trust. And oftentimes you trust someone who you feel most familiar with or comfortable with. So whether it's a woman speaking to a female doctor or, you know, a, a black employee or a, a black mother speaking to a black provider or a black lactation consultant to help her breastfeed or a, a Spanish speaking, um, you know, person speaking to a Spanish speaking provider. And so I think one of the things that's been um, really critical to us is we've really built our own um, product and, and provider network, you know, 40% of our providers are BIPOC. Like we can, you know, queer mental health, we can match you with a queer mental health provider who specializes exactly in that. Um, you know, we, so, so I, I think it's so critical that as you think about the products you're bringing um, to, to make sure that it actually has a level of personalization to really support these kind of these groups that maybe don't have trust with a lot of products that they, they've previously been given because they, there haven't been something that they totally resonate with. Um, and so that that's, um, you know, I think something too to, to really call out that when you're trying to tackle these issues that you're, you're bringing in the thoughtful products that are actually doing it and not you know, products that are just paying lip service to it right now, um, you know, but not doing anything about it. You know, Kate, that's one of the things our employees talk about. They, you know, kind of pre-Maven, because um, our people were having babies pre-Maven. And they, they talk about how, uh, l let's say mental health, um, that making a phone call. Oops, sorry, sorry, one second. <laughs> okay, okay. I'll see. sorry about this so. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, I told my daughter once I, I like she wasn't allowed in on it when I was on a meeting and it just like she still talks about it. So I, I've given her permission to always say good night, wh whatever. Awesome. I'm that's awesome, Kate. That's awesome. Oh. Yeah. Um, one of the things that that um, you, you know just kind of came to mind for me was thinking about our people, and yeah. and and pre um, uh, COVID nineteen, our people were having babies, and and uh, and one of the things that was happening is they would call for mental health support. And they would call, and like calling today, and then someone says, oh, excellent, yeah, we're here. We'll see you at 10 o'clock on March 14th. And they were like, 10 o'clock, March 14th? Okay, and that was actually care, and we were paying for that. We were paying for that, you know, which I'm ashamed of today. Okay, but, but that is not the situation today. And, and so our, our people are getting access right now when, when they need it, because nobody's calling because things are going great. When people are calling for help, they need help and they probably needed it four weeks ago, but it just took them a while to get clear to reach out for help. The other thing is what you mentioned, being able to find someone who understands the situation they're in based on life experience and the demographic differences that, that, that bring different life experiences. That matching has been what people talk about the most. Uh, because it's one thing to get mental health support soon, which is better than nothing. But talking to somebody who, you know, is going to be recommending things to you that just don't work for you. Um, so, you know, you, you've taken DNI to another level there to make sure that you've got the the providers, you know, in your network um, where people can do that matching. And our people, you know, thank you uh, for that. So, um, because that's diversity and inclusion and belonging. Um, it, it's 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 um, uh, really making that match happen so that people can feel like they matter and you know they matter because if you know they matter, you're going to make sure that that 
that uh, occurs um, for them. As you look forward for Maven, now with all, all that you learned, always innovating, you know, on the tip of the spear, uh, going forward uh, to do this for more and more uh, people and helping their organizations um, uh, become a great place to work for all, uh, what do you see, you know, looking into 2021, you know, kind of the critical work around people with parental uh, responsibilities and maybe a year ahead? What should we all be mindful of? Should we be thinking about? Yeah, I think it's um, exactly what we're talking about. It's it's what does access mean? Because everybody needs that support and access right now. And does access mean just, you know, better virtual tools? Or does it actually mean that connection to help you get through a life experience where someone who understands that? And so I think that that's really what drives the outcomes, the satisfaction, the patient engagement, where you really actually see meaningful change and people raise their hand and say, this was an amazing benefit. This genuinely helped me. Um, and so I think that that's, that's just one thing that I think is this whole industry is now shifting to virtual solutions and virtual care okay. that we have to keep in mind. It's not just about putting technology in the hands of somebody and giving them an appointment in 10 minutes. It's giving them an appointment in 10 minutes with somebody who understands what they're going through and can, who actually helped solve their problems. So I think for us, you know, we're, we're continuing, we just launched our parenting and pediatrics product. Um, you know, we're continuing to double down on 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 many of the needs that we're seeing that, you know, I, I think we'll we'll really start to see. There's a, now so much research being done on parental burnout, mental health issues, and then also what COVID has done to children over the last, you know, year, um, uh, you know, particularly with with anxiety and, and depression. So, you know, those are, are all areas that we're really focused on. And then the other area is that you know given the high unemployment and and, and you know the, the unemployment rate today doesn't necessarily reflect all of the people that actually just dropped out of the workforce so so actually that rate is the, the people, people who are not in the workforce right now that rate is very very high and so um and so you know medicaid is 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 really where uh, a lot of people go 50% of children are born on medicaid plans and medicaid is going to be one of the, the the largest payer of healthcare services um, you know starting next year and so for us, you know, that, that's also, you know, you look at a lot of the racial disparities in care, at, you look at you know, black maternal death, a lot of that is in Medicaid. And so for us, that's an important new area that, um, you know, we're continuing to innovate in and go in. And what's been really interesting as it relates to the employer market is, you know, you, you kind of might think, oh, these are, these are not the same, but some of the largest retailers in America and, and a lot of the largest employers they might actually have, you know, uh, a, a lot of their populations that are on and off Medicaid. So that's exactly the type of population that a lot of, you know, great employers are are looking to support. Not just the, you know, the employees in HQ um, that are, are working corporate jobs, but you know, people who are working in factories, people that are are, you know, deliver in in the delivery kind of supply chain. And so, how do you support the supply chains and many of the the, the retailers across America? And so. You know that's been um, really, really exciting uh, for us to continue to tackle. Yeah, and you know, on the on the front lines um, is where the burnout is. You know that that's that's where it peaks, and so uh, that's that's what we have to uh, address. Um, and I'm going to invite Julian uh, back in uh, to join us as we begin to wrap up. But Kate, is is there um, you know any final thoughts that you would like to share? Um, you know, to help people. Um, again, assuming they're curious now, you know, they're, they're kind of curious. Any, any uh, final thoughts you'd like to share um, or, or, or steps and, and how to reach out to, to your team at Maven? Yeah, um, I think, uh, I, I think that the, the big final thought is um, un understand the problem by talking to a lot of different diverse perspectives on what the problem is, because it's going to be a different problem for for me versus, you know, someone living in Madison, Wisconsin versus someone living in Atlanta, Georgia, you know, depending on your age, your socioeconomic status, your race. And so really understand the diverse perspectives and all of the different angles of the challenges that new mothers and, and parents and working families really face to be able to tackle the problem for everyone. Um, that would be the, 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 the piece of advice. Um, yeah, we, we would, uh, this, is the, this is what we think about all day long. And um, we have a tremendous group of, of clients, of results that we would love, we would love to talk to anybody um, who's interested in investing and, and you know, open the lid up a little more on what we do. And uh, so how should they get to you? 
Well, uh, you could just email me directly, Catherine at mavenclinic.com, or our website is www.mavenclinic.com, and you can sign up for a demo right there. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Uh, Julian. Right on. Kate, thank you so much. Uh, your leadership, you and your team's laser focus on caring for women and parents in, gen in general. Um, it's, it's been a godsend, so thank you. And a special thank you to everyone who joined us today. The recording and the summary will be shared early next week. In January, our Better Together conversation will be with Deloitte, so make sure to mark your calendars. And if you haven't done so already, sign up for our uh, series on our landing page at greatplacetowork.com for that conversation and for any future sessions. Be sure to share it with your community because it's gonna take all of us to really change the world. If you'd like to share your experience or you have additional questions, please send them to Michael underscore Bush at greatplacetowork.com. So on behalf of Great Place to Work, thank you both for your time and thank each of you because we know we are better together. Take good hey, care. Julian, I just want to say, Kate, thanks for taking care of his babies. Uh, he's important <laughs> to us, so thanks for taking care of his babies. He means yeah. everything to us. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thanks, guys. Well, this is really um, great. Thank you very much, Kate. Thanks, Kate. Enjoy the rest of the day. Yeah, you too. Bye. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye.